welcome back to another episode of Living Out the Gospel, all about how do we live out our faith, not just on a Sunday, but every day of the week. And uh, today I have a good friend of mine, Will Carter, via uh, this streaming thing here, because we're now in 2024, so Happy New Year! Woo! Woo! <laughs> yeah, exciting new year. Who who knows what'll, what, what will await us, but that's okay. We'll get to it one day at a time, one minute at a time. So Absolutely. thank you for thank you very much for being here, Will. Great to have you on the, on the program. Well, thank you for having me. It's an absolute delight to be here. Yep. So uh, Will is uh, another member of Christ Fellowship Church, a good friend of mine from there. And then uh, so before we go super deep, we'll start off with something really fun, as we always do. So if you could have a theme song play every time you entered a room, what would it be? So, uh, well, I, I know this, uh, cause there is a, there is a, a serious answer to like, what is my like theme song, but what I want to have play when I enter the room is there's this, uh, wrestling anthem that this guy has that glorious, I won't give in, I won't give in till I'm victorious. And I'm like, like I would love just that every time I enter the room. Yes. Just a do 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 or whatever it goes. Yeah. 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 Actually, if I could just have that part, that would make me happy. J- just that part. Okay. Uh, oh, although yeah, I imagine, I imagine it's the kind of thing where if you actually had that happen every time you're in a room, even you would get annoyed of it and say like, okay, just stop, <laughs> stop, stop. stop. Yeah, yeah Please, I'm. Stop. I'm not that stop. big of a deal. No, I, I, uh, I, and I. What I. The only thing I, I can have that's close to that. Is when I want to get my students' attention, like usually at the start of class when I'm up there and they're like talking, talking. I will um, sometimes I'll just do an air horn. You know, I I tried with glorious, but then they like were like play more of that, and I was like no. Settle down. Settle down. Well, you mentioning in class and your students ties into the very first question. Which is, and I know you could go on for, for quite a while with this. In fact, you have kind of jumping ahead here, but you have a, a book that is going to be yeah. out. When is it going to be out? Uh, so it's going to be out in January of 2025. Okay. Uh, thank you for letting me. Yeah, it's getting better. It's being published with Running Wild. It's the uh, this, the story of the first six months uh, after my uh, car accident, after my my brain the uh, car accident, me a brain injury and a stroke. Uh, and just charts, um, I like to say charts from coma to graduation. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it's, I'm, I'm very blessed. God uh, put on my heart to write this book. And I've actually been going through the, uh, the proof copy now. And it doesn't feel like I wrote it. <laughs> is that you a good, is that, is that, that's a good thing then? Or is that a, a... Yeah, yeah, no, it's a great feeling. Cause it's like, oh, wow. Like, wow, that, that sounds pretty good. You know, but it's because I would, what I would say is like, whenever I am truly writing, like when I'm in the writing zone, um, the words come and I would like to say, you know, not trying to put this on my writing, but it feels very much spirit led. That's good. You know, where it's well, like, oh, then, I don't, oh, I don't, yeah. Yeah, and then Where talking like, about. Go ahead. Oh, go go ahead. No, no, you first. Okay, okay. Well, again, about spirit led, and then again, your classes. So all following to, how did the Lord lead you? And and uh, maybe we can spend just a few minutes on this, and then get onto other things. But I'd love to hear uh, the story about like how you how the Lord has led you to be where you are right now and tell everybody like, what do you do? What's your job? Where do you work? And how did you get to there? Oh, absolutely. So uh, I'm a lecturer of English over at Kennesaw state university. Um, and what it's, it's funny cause it is a long and winding road. Um, because I, so was it 2000, was it 2014? Uh, in January, 2014, I taught my first, college class and it was the greatest experience of my life 
sorry, 2013. I'm sorry, spring of 2013. I thought my first college class, it was the greatest experience of my life. I was teaching a creative writing class as part of my grad degree. I was getting my MFA uh, in playwriting over at uh, Boston University. And I taught a college class and I was like, oh crap, this is what I want to do with my life. And prior to that, I had wanted to get this degree in playwriting, write a play, and then go over to LA and write TV. Um, and so that was that was the hope and the plan. And then uh, I taught this college class. And I was like, "Crap, oh, this is this is what I want to do." Like, I am so excited every Tuesday when I get to go teach this class. And so, um, what happened for me is. I was like, okay, I want to teach. I want to teach. And then I was scared to go into college teaching because when you start off as a college professor, usually you're doing adjunct gigs. You know, you're usually um, working at a couple different schools, working part time, paying for your own insurance, you know, not making that much money. And it's really hard. And I was like, I don't want to do that. And so I was scared to follow God's leading. And I taught high school for two and a half years. And God used me in that environment. It's all part of his plan. But it was like, it was a Jonah situation. I don't want to do the thing that you're telling me I should do. So I'm going to do something that's like the thing you're telling me to do, but has insurance and a reliable paycheck. And yeah, and it didn't go well. Um, I mean, I am at least in, I shouldn't say it didn't go well. God has shown me that he used me even there. Uh, I mean, I will say this is I was I was transferred from the first school I was at. I was told at my second school that I was going to be non-renewed. And at the third school, I was just like, this isn't working out. Um, I will say side point of just the, about God. So like, yeah, I mean, like I felt like a failure. But then side thing about just God and what he does. Uh, one of my former students uh, who I taught at the second high school I was at, uh, Ballard high school. Um, she tagged me in a post and it was tag the teacher who had the biggest impact on your life. Mm. And I was like, what? You know, I taught you for a year. Like I I'm basically friends with her. Like she was a great student. I really appreciated having her as a student cause she was always engaged. She was all like, and we had like an understanding and it was good, but I, I taught you for a year and then I left that school, you know, and what? I was the one who had the, that was like, it was like God being like, don't categorize things in success and failure. Um, but so then I left teaching a high school. I left, I was teaching at Roswell High School. And it just wasn't, it wasn't working for me. It just wasn't working out. Uh, part of that is not, like that's not where I needed to be. The other part is I uh, I had a heart condition that I was unaware of until about a year later where I found out that I had half a heartbeat. Um, so it was also very hard because of that. Um, but then I, and then I quit that because I started dating this, this great woman, uh, Ashley Carter, uh, my wife. Um, and I was like, you know, I, I really feel like I, I want to quit. Cause I like, this is so hard. I'm struggling so much. And she encouraged me and said, I think that that sounds like a good idea. And so I, uh, I, I did quit. Uh, now, I mean, it was my idea. She wasn't like, you should quit your job. But I was like, I'm feeling like what God telling me to quit. And she was like, I, that sounds like it's right for you. And then, um, so then I did a brief stint at mattress firm. Whoa. Yeah. Mattress firm. Uh, but, uh, Ashley was like, you know, you've always talked about teaching college. And so summer of 2018, I, I applied for some adjunct jobs, got one at Reinhardt, one at Kennesaw, did that for a year. And then I got tapped to be a limited term, which is you teach full-time load, you get full-time pay, you get benefits. You just don't get summer classes. Um, unless there's a, a great need, but those all go to full-time faculty usually, you know. Uh, and then you get that for two years. And then after two years, you either get hired at Kennesaw full-time, you go back to part-time or you go, bye-bye. And so I, I was like, okay, this sounds great. Did that. And then grace of God got this lectureship and 
I love my job. I love it, love it, love it. It's stress. It's, there's stressors, you know. I I work a lot, but oh gosh, it's the best job in the world. I love hearing that, and I love because again, I've I've seen sort of your journey. I've seen uh, that all the things you've written about, and especially all the encouragement that you've received from students who you've taught. And I remember there was something that you said, a student had told you, and if I'm, if I'm getting this correct, it was like, I think it was somebody told you like, I don't like Christians, but I like you. Yeah. Well, something they, along uh, those lines. Yeah, it's abs you're totally right. Um, I'm going to censor what they said a little bit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they walk so where I teach um, now. I don't. I don't know if they're still there or not. But at the time, we had these people who were holding up signs about how certain people are going to burn in hell. Okay. Um, you know, yeah. not not yeah. at all the the right idea. You know, <laughs> of saying, "Hey, how do we get people to become Christians? We make them feel awful." Um, no. So I mean, these. Uh, no really just a terrible thing and not a good demonstration of, of Christ-like love and grace. But like they, had, so the student had just walked past this and they walked into class and here's the censor. They go, I effing hate Christians. And then they looked at me and they said, except for you, Carter, you're like a real Christian. And it was like, I was like, that makes me so happy and so sad. I'm so sorry. Yeah. That yeah. uh, I'm so glad that you see you see that I you see Christ in me. But and I'm that, so sad. that phrase right there is fantastic. You see Christ in you, and that's something that I mean, wherever we are, um, that is something that people need to see in us. They need to see not us, but Christ in us, coming sort of out of us and our actions and how we just our attitude, how we treat people, especially those. Um, or I should say, including those who are non-Christians, um, because it's, you can, it's just the whole thing of like, do you practice what you preach? It's that whole thing of like, okay, are you just going to preach at me and say, you need to follow these commandments, you follow these laws, or are you actually acting as Christ would have you to act towards people who are far from him? Um, so I would love for you to just continue talking a little bit more, if you could talk yeah. a lot like, and and the question I would ask just to anybody is like, what does it mean to be a Christian fill in the blank? What does it mean in your case to be a Christian lecturer of English? So what I would say is like, I'll 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 put some qualifiers around this just for uh, so that my job understands. Uh, I don't actively uh, proselytize a preacher, you know, because obviously you know that's. As I'm there, I'm there to teach. Mm -hmm. I will talk about my faith with students who want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. But what I think of my job is ministry. Um, because at the end of the day, I get to be Christ to these kids mm. who and and adults. I mean, I teach all all I, you know, I teach 16 to 80, as mm. I like to say. <laughs> because uh, that's the oldest student I've ever had. I had an 80-year-old. Um, is a great student, by the way. Uh, great guy. Jim, if you're listening, you're a good man. Uh, but is uh, I, I get to be Christ. And I, I, what I find is I, I find that I'm blessed where I, I have students who, like, they just come to my office to talk. I have students coming to sit down and get advice from me. I mean, I had a student, um, he lost his dad um, this past summer and he just wanted to get lunch with me. And I don't think that's me being special. Mm -hmm. I think they're seeing Christ. And that's what, like, I guess the, the thing that I would say, and this is for the people listening, is like, I think the hard part is you think, Oh, to be a Christian at my job, I have to be, you know, you know, making sure that everyone knows I'm a Christian. I have to be preaching. I have to be, you know, citing Bible verses. I have to be. And honestly, I mean, like, and for me, 
I, I, you know, I can't really do that as many other people can, you know, but I, I will not shy away from Christ. I always tell my students at the start of the class, you know, I'm a Christian. It's about, about me, you know, uh, I go to church of Christ fellowship and I, by being, by being a conduit for Christ's love, I can show them a different side of Christianity. And I would you say know. you are preaching. Yes. You're well, not, thank, thank you're you. not, you're not literally saying it's a little bit like this reminds me of Mr. Rogers. And is mm. that there was somebody who pointed out, uh, maybe it was like a documentary and they pointed this out. It's like, he never mentioned God explicitly. He never mentioned like religious things, even though he was literally an ordained minister, mm. but it was that everything that he did was informed by his faith. All of his actions, all of his words were informed by his faith. So he was preaching, just maybe not the way that you would encounter in a sunny morning. Absolutely. And that you would, you know, that he's different. You know, I, I know Mr. Rogers gets all the snaps. Because <laughs> um, I, 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 I always love when I see that. Um, you know, you'll see different things that he did. You know, I think the one that I saw, uh, and I've seen it a couple times, but the other one I saw the other day is when he um, and this uh, this black police officer put their feet in the same pool. You know, yeah. as a sort of a uh, rebellion to segregation, right? To say like, look, we're both people. He's black, I'm white, and our feet are in the pool, and everything's good. Yeah. You know, I'm just like. You know, I do. No, I mean, I nothing that is incredibly humbling. I love, I do not equate myself with Mr. Rogers, but I love to be equated because Mr. Rogers is the freaking man. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, because the thing is, you say, you say Fred Rogers' name and everybody has good vibes. You know, everybody loves Fred Rogers. And why do you, like you said, why do you love him? Because of Jesus. You know, Right. And he was, yeah, and uh, that's that's great. No, and I, I appreciate that, yeah. Certainly. Well, going into another aspect, so we talked a little bit about, you know, how do you do, how do you sort of incorporate your faith, or how does your faith sort of inform and drive everything you do in terms of, like, again, at work, in terms of the school, um, and then uh, to sort of navigate outside of that sphere into other spheres, how does your faith also inform you in terms of just like your family and your friends and your relationships yeah. at church? Well, absolutely. And, and I'll say a couple things with, uh, with how I teach. Um, one of the things is uh, I, I don't seek to punish. So like I will often uh, like, reach out to students who have maybe like gone MIA or haven't met, turned some stuff in and uh, I will extend grace, you know, like for instance, like I'll have an issue for me. I've had this issue with plagiarism mm. and uh, I was talking with my, uh, the, the, the chair of composition. She told me not to ever call her my supervisor uh, because she is first and foremost, my friend, you know, She's uh, she's a great friend, an awesome person. Jeannie, if you're listening, you're glorious. Um, but she uh, is like, they don't learn anything with if you give them a zero. And I, I love and I love that because it really helped bolster what I believe, which is I'm going to show you grace. I'm going to allow you to redo this. You know, of course, obviously. That is, if it happens again, then we have consequences. But I mean, I had a student um, who was a Christian, and they said an incredibly humbling thing. They were like, you have taught me so much about Christ's grace and forgiveness through your actions. And I was like, I love you, student. <laughs> No, I mean, it just, it was so like incredibly humbling, so incredibly um, meaningful. I mean, again, Christ through me, not me, but, you know, 
I think that's one way a show is like, uh, how can I model Christ? And I think that's one of the ways that I can. I would say through my life, I mean, uh, definitely impacts how I live. You know, I strive to be Christ. Um, I strive to speak words of love, words of encouragement. I strive to lift people up. Uh, so I live in an environment, live and work in an environment that is very negative. And I feel like not just where I work, but I just feel like this world <laughs> is incredibly negative and it's so easy to be negative. And I don't think that's Christ. I think Christ, yes, Jesus wept. If we feel bad, it's okay to feel bad. If we're sad, it's okay to be sad. But we should not look for the negative in every moment. You know, we should, you know, seek to rejoice. Um, and then I would say as far as like friends, you know, uh, I've always... I've actually always struggled with uh, Christian friendships because I am, um, I don't know, I, I don't know, I'm going to say something that I'm, I'm going to try and phrase this in a good way. Like I grew up around um, a lot of people who did Christian only thing, like only listen to Christian radio. Okay. Well, you know, don't really read non-Christian books. You know, it's like, don't watch. And like my family, I mean, I, forgive me. I might be giving something away. No. People who know my dad know this is true. But like, I I, want, I was raised on Seinfeld. <gasps> what? Uh, oh, the scandal. I know. I know. Don't stone me. Don't stone me. But you know what I mean? Like, I, I what I, and I would say is like, that it did kind of um, make it challenge. I went to public school. You know, a lot of people uh, in my elementary and middle school years were going to the church school. Hmm. You know, we had a school at our, our church growing up, which is a good school. I'm not going to throw shade at that school. I know the guy who, uh, you know, I, I believe he still runs it. If he doesn't, he ran it for a long time. He's a very good man. Um, his wife was a theater teacher. They're a very good woman, great people. So I'm not going to throw shade at the school, but it's just not where I went to school. And I wasn't part about that. But like, I definitely found for me in college, you know, um, my roommate, my sophomore, junior was a guy, it was a Christian, Matt, great guy, great friend. Uh, tried to get involved with our, our Christian organizations on camp, a Christian organization on campus uh, and that definitely influenced how I lived. I, you know, I, uh, was, I say absent until marriage. I didn't, I was not a drinker partier, you know, person. I, I enjoy alcohol, but try not to enjoy it to excess, you know, uh, and I don't know I was a square, um, <laughs> Yeah, one of my my roommate, one of my, my buddies, Robert, used to call me old man, because uh, I would go to sleep at a decent hour, you know, and I didn't play um, the drinking games with them. Um, call me old man, but you know, I I think for me, I think the thing is, yes, it impacted how I like what I avoided, but I I think it also I think there's a lot. I think that's what a lot of people think Christ living is. But mm -hmm. I would also say it impacted how I engaged. Mm. Like um, for me, I have a ton of non Christian friends because they need, you know, one, I, I just love them as people, I just enjoy them. But sure. two, People need Jesus. Yes. Uh, you know, and then the other thing for me is I have always been, and this is God through me again. This is not me. And this is tricky because I'm trying to not, I'm like not trying to claim the, anything, any righteousness here. Huh. 
but it's like God has always put on my heart for uh, for people like I would often when I was in college, I would see somebody sitting alone at the dining hall. I want to go sit with them. You know, um, if I see somebody looking kind of down, I want to try and talk to them, you know. Um, and I, I, I have learned that is both gospel and something that um, I was diagnosed with uh, about, gosh, almost a year and a half ago, which is, well, I guess about a year ago, about a year ago, um, which is HSP, highly sensitive. So it's about like, I am an over-processor, but it also is like, I, I never want anyone to feel bad. Gotcha. You know, and it's hard because I have definitely had moments in my life where I, especially when I was doing stand up and all this, and uh, when I was doing stand up and I did stand up in college, and it, that, that my faith influenced me there because was completely clean, you know, no, um, no cursing or, you know, inappropriate stuff. Um, if I would have done it again, I would have done less tasteless comedy, but I you know nothing that was, I never did anything that I was like ashamed to say. You know what I mean? There's a word never, I'm thinking of that, you know, as you're, as you're saying all this, that's the word is engage. And what I'm thinking so much about is, uh, the question I normally ask is, uh, how do you, navigate being salt and light but then i'm thinking in your situation when you're talking about the difference of you know some people who grow up and they do just christian things and they're always involved in the church things and it's almost like they're kind of i've heard this term like they're kind of cloistered away it's like no 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 we we need to be in the safe safe place over here doing all the christian stuff we don't want to be mingling with these these scary, dangerous non Christians. Oh, that that's terrible. And it's like, no, yeah. no. We are called to be salt and light. We're called to be in the world, but not yes. of the world. To engage. And so, again, some of the things you're saying are bringing that idea to mind, which is like, okay, we want to be. And that's great that you have non Christian friends. I wish I had those myself. Uh, most of my yeah. friends are just you know church friends. Uh, people I know through church, but I think that is such an important thing to do is to to not be, I think we can stay in our comfort zones yes. and be used to the comfort zones, be used to what we're familiar with, the crowd that we're familiar with, and just stay inside, but then our light's not shining. And there's a lot of people who need that light, who need and we're we're not getting we're not going out there and engaging with them. So if you could talk a little bit about that or any, or any kind of like practical oh, yeah. ways that you do that. Oh, absolutely. So I I think the thing that I would say is I love you know being in the world not of the world because I there was a pastor at my church uh, growing up not the lead pastor but uh, one of the the teaching pastors. Uh, it was a youth pastor actually who would teach sometimes he's a great preacher um and he gave a sermon on be in the world but not of the world and he only focused on the first part hmm. the whole sermon was on the first part hmm. and i thought it was he's like everybody pays attention to the second part everybody is focused on that second part but no more weight is given to that second part you know the sentence is be in the world, but not of the world. Two heart, two halves, one ministry. And I, it was a beautiful sermon. And I, and I, I think that's what we have to be because I think the thing is we have to show the world that, that, you, that Christ came to redeem our lives in this life. Yes, we will be fully redeemed in the next life, but he didn't die on the cross so that, okay, whenever you die, you got your ticket. You know, no, we were redeemed for this life. 
And I think the thing is, um, I think one of the practical ways that I would say something that I have found, uh, I have always not thought of myself as a good evangelist because I get kind of uncomfortable with the idea of like confrontation. I have found that if I just talk and listen to other people, that that is evangelism. Like somebody, I uh, read, um, oh gosh, what what book do we have to read for discipleship? It was um, it was a book on evangelism. Oh gosh, I'm I'm a bad Christian. Don't don't remove me as a discipleship group leader, Justin. Please don't. Um, but oh, um, sharing Jesus without freaking out. Yeah, I have. Yeah, uh, I have that one too. Yeah. Yeah, and I and that honestly, at first I was like, I don't know about this book, and then it really, it really made an impact. Where it's like, we talk about things that matter to us. So we talk about movies we saw or things we like. You know, like I often me and my students will have Star Wars conversations, um, but it's like, if we just talked about God like that, and I have through that i have been able to share and this is something that usually happens with uber drivers hmm. because we are in a position where we are just uh we're in the car together yeah. and uh yeah and we just and we're forced to have this like 45 minute conversation this drive from alpharetta to kennesaw and n nine times out of ten it's a great conversation and one of the things that, like, I just sort of try to pray beforehand is, God, please be in this conversation, because I know that I'm, I'm I know I'm going to have this conversation with this person that I don't know, and I know that I have a chance, and I've been able to pray for people. Um, I've also been able to do things like I had a uh, an Uber driver who was a a truck driver who had to sell his company, I and his that. wife. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I and I raised money for him. And he was like, I really needed this. Thank you. And that was super cool. And that was all God opening that door. And I think the thing that I would say is like the practical thing, like I don't do well with like a five point plan. Like uh I'm a Presbyterian by um as a, how I was raised, um, but I'm not a very good Presbyterian because <laughs> I hate, I hate that kind of stuff, um, and I would say like because I don't it kind of stresses me out because I'm not focused on the person I'm focused on the steps. Oh, okay. You know, mm. and. You gotta, and so for me, I, I will have conversations where I'll be like, okay, I think this is a Jesus time. Let me see how this, how many I can work Jesus in. And then they start talking about something that doesn't lead to that, but it leads to something else. Like maybe I find out that they are like, um, I had uh, a gentleman who was uh, an immigrant in need of dental, uh, emergency dental surgery. And he did not have insurance. Well, so I didn't talk to him about Jesus, but I got, by the grace of God, I got to put him in touch with my uncle, who's a dentist and knows a lot of different things. And he was able to get his dental surgery. You know, uh, and I would say that was just as valuable for the gospel. But it wasn't like, because I think the thing that can be hard is when you're like, Looking for my opening, looking for my, uh, Jesus, you know, <laughs> and it's like, you're not really being present with that, you know, uh, it's yeah, like, if well, you yeah. look at the person as a project rather than a person, it's well, probably not well, going mean, to work out too well. I'll be like, Oh, I got to get this person. I got to like check this box off or something. And it's like, uh, this is an individual who's has struggles and they're, just as you know they have dignity just like you do so they're a person they're not a project absolutely and i i always think about uh mr gaffigan um he goes 
And he, he, I can't remember what joke this comes from, but he's like, can I like to talk to you about Jesus? And he goes, is there anything like more uncomfortable? He's like, even if you do believe, you're like, I'd rather you not. <laughs> uh, but it's like, but that's how it, it doesn't, it feels like a telemarketer call. Mm. It's not, because if I, because I think if we look at what Jesus did, he built relationships. He ate with people. He sat with people. You know, I think that's the thing is that he showed people he cared about them as people. And I think that's the thing that I think is missing with some evangelism five point plans is like, first, you have to show you like, I care about you. Right. Because, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I honestly, when a random person's like, let me talk to you about something, I'm like, go away. You know, but if a friend is like, hey, man, can I really talk to you about this? I'm going to listen a lot more. I like to think of it as you're sharing good news because that's what the gospel, that's what gospel means. It means good news. Yeah. And so it's less of me saying, I want to try to sell you a product or I want to sign you up for something. It's like, no, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just saying, like, I have this relationship with the greatest person ever and I have received the greatest gift ever. And it's something you can have too. And it's like, I'm not trying to like get anything from you. I'm trying to give this to you, give you this, this knowledge. It, it's absolutely. And I think it's like, I don't know. I, I, I think like the, uh, my favorite form of the gospel. Okay. And I may have told you this before. Um, but it's when I gave a talk at my church the summer after my accident, I, I became the first person to show a rated R, a clip from a rated R movie. <gasps> uh, I know, I know, uh, no, but it's from the movie Magnolia. It's my, uh, my favorite movie. It's a Paul Thomas Anderson movie, but there's a song in there mm -hmm. that to me is the gospel. It's the lyrics. It's um. It's it's called "Wise Up" by Amy Mann, and it goes, "It's not going to stop until you wise up." It's not going. It repeats that a couple times. Um, not going to stop until you wise up, and then it's and then at the end it goes, "It's not going to stop until you wise up." So just give up. And to me, that's the gospel. Is like, look, this life, this this sin that you are you're in. But also this loneliness and this darkness and this lack of hope and this despair, like it's not gonna stop until you wise up. But you're never gonna wise up. So just give up. Give your life to Christ. Kind of like, like give up your rebellion, basically. Yeah. But it's I think the thing is, is we have to remember how what the darkness was like, right? I think we often become too familiar with the light. So we forget how lost our brothers and sisters in this world are. You know what I mean? Hmm. We forget how lost the rest of creation is. We forget that loneliness that despair, that, you know, the darkness that is just life apart from Christ. And it's like, if we remember that, then we would be like, oh my gosh, I really, like, I, I mean, I don't know about you, but like essential oils people are like, I found this great thing. And they talk to you about it so much. And you're like, shut up. But the, the, <laughs> Shut up, please. Uh, but it's like, I think in their mind, uh, they feel like they have something that they made their life so much better, so they have to tell you about it. And I don't know, sometimes we're like, I can't talk about this. You know, like, because I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. 
Well, I mean, the gospel is, I'm trying to remember the scripture, but it's like, it isn't a, it is a, what is it? Is it a stumbling block or it's an offense to those who are perishing? So it's like, it is an offense because it's saying you're a bad person, <laughs> saying you're a sinner. But then it's like, then there's the, that's like the bad news. Of course, the good news is like, but Jesus came, which we just, you know, celebrated Christmas Day, like the incarnation. Jesus came, mm-hmm. so it's like he loved the world enough to come to be amongst us and sacrifice, sacrifice himself t- entirely so that we would be redeemed back to him. And if that's not worthy of being shared, that's kind of strange. Well, and that absolutely, and it's like, I, and for for people, I think we need to, we have to share the the personal aspect of it. Is like I, I there's a I I think in terms of songs, even though I am not uh, much of a musician myself anymore. Um, and Sufjan Stevens has a song called "To Be Alone with You." And it's about, and at first you think it's about a woman. Because he's like, to be alone with you, I'd sell my shoes. To be alone with you, I'd swim Lake Michigan. All these things that he would do. And then the song ends with, to be alone with me, you went up on a tree. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, I love it. Because it's what it is. <laughs> mm. And God did this so that he could know you, like that you could know him, that you could experience him. I mean, he knows you already. Mm-hmm. But that you could know him and have relationship with him. You know, that's why he came to redeem you, but so that you could be alone with him. You know, hmm. and I, I think that, I think that's the thing that I, I find for me that I always have to remember is like, not Jesus loves you as a general phrase, but Daniel Flaherty. Jesus was thinking about you when he died on that cross. You know, yeah. he wanted to be alone with you. Making it personal from the abstract to the personal. Well, yeah. Instead of God being like, uh, yeah, I, uh, I'd like to get an order for uh, all of humanity, please. Uh, <laughs> you know, if he's not, he's not taking, I guess the two, to maybe and maybe this is um, this is just came to me. I was just thinking, like, God is not buying dinner for the table. He's taking you on a date. You know, hmm. he is specifically courting you. You know, he didn't buy drinks for the bar. You know, because I think that that's sometimes how people think about it. It's like, oh, yeah, Jesus loves you. Like, they think that that's what it is. It's like this general thing, but no, he loves you. Well, on that note, that yeah. On that note, I think that's that's a good place to, uh, yeah, to wrap up that part. And the very last thing, very last question I'll ask, then we can go, is is there a particular cause or a nonprofit that you're – that you really think is doing good work that you'd like to mention so others could find out about it? Oh, gosh. I, you know what? I will give, I'll give you this because it is a great organization that um, my friend, Joe Breeden, uh, it runs. It's called Friends of Refugees. Um, and what they do is they really uh, they try to help refugees get, like, what they need, like, so they come to this country and they don't know anybody. Or maybe they've got a few friends or maybe a few family, but they're really struggling. So refu- what Friends of Refugees does, I mean, I've talked to Joe and he's helped find people appliances, find people clothes, find people jobs. You know what I mean? Like, they are being the hands and feet of Christ. And I love, and Joe is a man and he is an incredibly humble man. So he would not do this. So I'll do this. I'll just talk about it a little bit. Joe uh, owned a bank in Florida, sold it for a lot of money and pretty much doesn't ever have to work. But 
he's doing a full time job running Friends of Refugees. And he is a man who every time I've sent him somebody, like I have an Uber driver who's like from Venezuela and needs some like trying to find a job or, you know, somebody who's trying to get medical care, like that guy who needed medical care. Joe was also working for me is like, um, you know, Joe is always there and he is living out his Christian faith. And Friends of Refugees is doing great work because we have so many refugees in Atlanta, yeah. in the Atlanta area. So, yeah, everybody check that out. Very, very cool. All right. Well, I appreciate you mentioning that. And uh, again, I'll, I'll link that description below so people can check out that organization and support them if, if they feel led to. So, well, thank you so much for your, your time, Will. Really appreciate sure. your friendship. Really appreciate what you do. Uh, just appreciate just being well. just being at, at Kennesaw State and uh, being uh, a shining light, basically, for Christ there and what you do. So very much appreciate that. And uh, with yeah. that, we'll call into another episode here and uh, just go and live out of faith through all that we do each day. Glorious. Glorious, yes. Amen. <laughs>